This is high tech. I mean, this is not just a, a, an accident. <laughs> This was made to keep you alive. This boat actually was felt to be alive, and it also felt that you had to have the relationship to it, that a good relationship to it, and it would take care of you. They're not it's easy to build. It is living, yeah. yeah it's okay. From 1944 to 48, I lived in Chinica Village, which is on the western side of Prince William Sound. At the time that I was living there, there was about seven Bidarkas. My father owned one, and I paddled it. These were made for distance. Uh -huh. so the Russians set up a, a fort in California, Fort Ross, north of San Francisco, and the Lutic people went down there in their kayaks from Kodiak and Prince William Sound. They paddled all the way. You know, talk about distance. They were cruisers. They were cruisers. The Bidarka is all about using the energy that's there in your environment. And you're not fighting your waves. You are letting the waves do your work for you is a very important thing. And this took, I think, 10,000 years to evolve this. You know, the commercial kayakers, they curve up like this. They don't get it. And they wonder why they can't stay straight in the wind. They tend to weathercock a lot. <laughs> they sure do. Steve Lassoff's by Darko was the only survivor of the 1964 earthquake tsunami that destroyed Geneva. And his by Darko survived because it was in Cordova at the time, and it was in a museum. Watching the men work on these Bidarkas when I was six years old was an experience that stayed in my brain. I was imprinted, and so I actually knew how to do it. How close do you think the kayak building tradition came to being completely lost in Prince William Sound? Boy, it came close, really close. If it hadn't been for Steve's kayak in Cordova, I don't know if I'd have been able to bring it back. <laughs>